Hi everybody, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn, and this is A Message from Manchester. Every week we explore stories to explain Manchester to the rest of the world. And sometimes we tell Manchester some things it needs to know. Okay Canadians, so here's how football works. It's just like ice hockey, except without the sticks, or the skates, or the fighting, or the fun. I'm just kidding. We all know the real men play football. Thursday was International Beer Day, and... Sorry? Okay, let's take it again. Thursday was World Bee Day, and we're not talking about the thing you wash your bum with. We're talking about these guys, or should I say, these girls. They're all girls, you know. We need to make this a bank holiday in Manchester. The Manchester worker bee is everywhere. It's even on our logo here at Wicked Acorn. It's part of the city's coat of arms. It dates back to the Industrial Revolution. People referred to the city's mills as beehives, and its workers were as busy as bees. On the 20th of December 2017, the United Nations unanimously approved the 20th of May as World Bee Day. A third of the world's food production depends on bees. Every third spoonful of food you put in your mouth was made possible by bees. Look, even if you only eat hamburgers, the stuff that cows eat doesn't grow without bees. And the bees are in danger. So here are a few things you can do to help them out. Don't mow your lawn. The bees need those dandelions. But if your spouse doesn't believe that one, then the best thing you can do is stop spraying poison on stuff. Buy raw honey from local farmers. Oh, this just in, International Beer Day is on the 6th of August. And remember, you can't have beer without bee. We've mentioned our logo, and this is one of our mugs we sell on our webpage. It's a print of a Manchester bee mosaic I made. My interpretation of the one in City Hall. If you want one, you can find them there. But if you want a chance to get one for free, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button. We're getting closer to that magic number, and when we do, we'll pick a random subscriber and send them a free mug. We've got a lot of Manchester anniversaries to get through this week, so get comfy. 23rd of May, 1975. 10CC, a band that made Strawberry Studios in Stockport their home, released the original soundtrack. This album had their mega hit, I'm Not In Love, on it. It was the last album with the band's original lineup. We've done a video about this fabulous group and their hit, I'm Not In Love. Check the description for a link. Tuesday was Nobby Styles' birthday. We salute you, sir. Even I've heard of Nobby. In 1981, he made the jump to the North American Soccer League, coaching the Vancouver Whitecaps for three seasons. Here to tell us more from somewhere in sale is Rick Ainsworth, our Mank in the Field reporter. Thanks, Paul. I'm here outside the home of Nobby Styles, who lived here on Marsden Road in Sale. A Manchester lad born in Collyhurst who made it good. He played 395 games and scored 19 goals for Manchester United as a defensive midfielder. He made his England debut on the 10th of April 1965, famous for having false teeth and dancing on the pitch when England won that 1966 World Cup final against Germany. He won a number of trophies at Manchester United, including the 1968 European Cup final against Benfica. Sadly, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2013. Three years later, his family announced he had advanced dementia. Between 1989 and 1993, he worked as a youth trainer at Manchester United and was also given an MBE by the Queen. Sadly, he passed away on the 30th of October 2020 from advanced dementia. Thank you for helping lift the nation, Nobby, and rest in peace. We're only scratching the surface of Nobby's story and there will be more in-depth information coming soon. So keep an eye out and watch out for the channel. Thanks, Rick. Looking forward to that. There will be a link to Rick's channel in the description. But first, I have some good news of a personal nature to share. I've just had all my COVID shots, so I'm now legally and officially huggable. And just in case you didn't know, there's now a new app for the vaccine. So you can track and trace your family and friends with the microchip. You just... Scan the injection site, as you would with any QR code, with your phone camera. And... 
It says this Microsoft chip is not compatible with this Apple iOS device. Damn you, Bill Gates. So if you've not heard that conspiracy theory yet, cast your mind back to 1802, when fear of the new smallpox vaccine had conspiracy theorists telling everyone it would cause cows' heads to emerge from their bodies. Last week marked the anniversary of the first vaccination. Not the first COVID vaccination, the first ever vaccination. On the 14th of May, 1796, conceived and administered by Edward Jenner, who was coincidentally born this week on the 17th of May in 1749. Warning, science stuff to follow. Some of the images you are about to see are graphic and may not fit with your view of reality. Smallpox has been around about as long as humans have. If you look up smallpox, it says smallpox was, was an infectious disease. The last naturally occurring case was diagnosed in October 1977, and the World Health Organization certified the global eradication of the disease in 1980. That's a first in human history. No other human disease has been eradicated. The risk of death after contracting smallpox was between 20 and 60 percent, with higher rates among babies. Often those who survived had extensive scarring of their skin, and some were left blind. In the last hundred years of its existence, it killed over half a billion people. Thanks to Edward Jenner and his vaccine, it is now history. The discovery of vaccines is hailed as the greatest achievement in science. More than one in four Americans say they are not planning to get the vaccine, ever. 26% of Americans are planning to skip the shot altogether. Hesitancy about receiving the vaccine is now under 6% in the UK, down from 22% back in December. And this is really disappointing. Are we really going to be out crazied by the Americans again? This country is known for its eccentric attitudes. I mean, where are all the mad George Kings? Where are all the loopy Lizzies? The following is a public service announcement from the United States that was clearly put together by lizard people. It's got Illuminati written all over it. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor an actual medical doctor. I've practiced medicine for 21 years. I am a critical care nurse. I've been a nurse for 16 years. I spent four years in undergraduate school, then four years in medical school, and then another five years as a resident in emergency medicine. Look at all of my diplomas. I worked a second job to put myself through nursing school. I'm 53 now, and I won't have my student loans paid off till well after I retire. I can name every organ in your body and tell you exactly what it does. Did you know there are between 60 and 100,000 miles of blood vessels in the human body? I know that because I've studied human bodies. Did you know the human body has 205 bones? Well, you're wrong. It's actually 206. I did know that because I'm a doctor. Did you know that eating raw ginger cures cancer? You did? Good, because it doesn't. I've saved people's lives. I've cracked open a chest and manually beat a human heart. I even delivered some babies in the back of cars. Do you know how many people have shown me weird skin things at parties and asked me if they were dying? Too many. My life is spent trying to improve and save yours. Oh, but you read something on Facebook? Your friend from high school who sells jewelry, she posted it? The one who's 53 and still builds dollhouses? You heard what on whose podcast? Is he a doctor? No. Scientist? No. Can he name one of the ingredients in the vaccine? Can he point to his gabella? Then tell him to shut the up. The gabella's right here, by the way. Isn't that polio shot we gave your kid? And then your kid not getting polio? Well, those two things are related. How about this? You do your job, I'll do mine. Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Just get the vaccine. Grow the f up and get the vaccine. And tell your friend on Facebook to stick to jewelry. Another birthday anniversary this week. Lots of May babies, or maybes as we call them. 
Francis Edgerton, 3rd Duke of Bridgewater, 21st of May, 1736, a pioneer of canal construction. He is famed as the father of British inland navigation. He commissioned the Bridgewater Canal, often said to be the first true canal in Britain and the modern world. The canal was built for him by his agent John Gilbert with advice from James Brindley to service his coal mines at Worsley in Lancashire. And again, we have a video about him and the canal. Check the description for a link. Of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't remember the 22 this week, the anniversary of the arena bombing on the 22nd of May, 2017. I wasn't living here in May of that year, but we came here shortly after. It's made an indelible mark on Manchester, and we will remember them. I'm Paul from Wicked Acorn, and this has been a message from Manchester. Okay.